My name is Ricardo Matlacas and uh, I'm an interdisciplinary artist uh, working with uh, several media and I live in London. I, I had a need, as you have, to, to, to do something important. So I began like working upon certain issues. I suppose for me, one of the starkest works of yours uh, was when I remember that you went to Palestine. Yes. And you worked very closely with a lot of people there. And I remember you, you worked with a lot of, I think, sort of religious people as well, I seem to remember. Yes, that, yes. Yeah? Actually, we worked with the archbishop yeah. as well, uh, Father Atallah something. And he's very popular and he's an activist, great priest. Like, he's the first priest I can hear saying, yeah, what, what religion you belong to? To doesn't matter. We all about the same. We all human beings, and that's what he's fighting for. So I was really well, very, very happy working for him, with him, and you know, for the same issue, the Palestine issue. But you know, we are talking about Palestine, but we're talking about many other issues. Yeah. And what? Why do you do this? I mean, you say it's important to you. I noticed your recent works are sort of also about the refugee crisis, and I'm kind of interested in. What is it that draws you to that? Yeah, my you're, you're from Italy. Yes. Yeah, you know that South Italy, what's going on with the, with the refugee problem. And also a lot of ra racism. Mm. My point is, um, really, we are human beings, right? If I exist, what is, uh, why, you know, what shall I do in this life? Why am I here? For sure, I don't want to be a hero or anything. I just want to make my life worth of being alive. Otherwise, what do I do? I work to earn my little money to buy my little things. It's such a, a irrelevant thing. I don't want to live for that. Mm -hmm. So I rather, I really want to try to do my best. And, you know, art can, be, can do something, maybe. And what sort of impact would you really like to have with your art? A change think? of consciousness. A change of consciousness. Which yeah, also happened in me. But, you know, the basic things to become human, there's people like much behind that. So at least I want all of us to have that change of consciousness close to the being human. Because we are not being human. We are not using most of our potential. And what does it mean to you to be human? Just, just be basic, basic, like knowing what life is about, you know what I mean? Like just, just not do all this trouble, like wars and boundaries, nationality, uh, this is mine. And it's fine to belong things, but not at that level, you see? Like you have to let go. We are human when we don't realize what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Everything uh, functions so badly. It is true also like this, this thing of, you know, like I notice in myself and as, a, as, as a, the community around me, like we all have this, this voices inside, like positive and negative, depends which one you listen to. Yeah. So, but because sometimes you are in the vibe of everything is negative, then you become negative. We are, we are, we, we part of biology system, like we are human beings and we do have behaviors which are stronger than our rational thinking and heart, heart uh, realm. Mm -hmm. So that are like inst instincts, I'd say, mm -hmm. and also the way we've been growing up, mm -hmm. perhaps with violence, mm -hmm. like in my case, with violence, I saw a lot of crap. And then, mm -hmm. of course, it still feeds me. Mm -hmm. But I'm stronger now because I go like, no, mm -hmm. this is not right. So when you, when you start thinking and believing that, then you go like, no, we have to act upon the good. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about these works of yours. So you've got three works. Yes. And each of them is sort of got some focus, really, on the refugee crisis. Right, yes. So one is called... Sweet Thorn. This yeah, is that's a performance a, piece. Yeah, I began with that. Mm. Uh, if you remember, I love this piece. Yes, I went to Palestine and yes. I had uh, some theopolitical uh, research. Yeah. Uh, so I conceived Sweet Thorn there and then performed it uh, in uh, Cape Town, in South Korea, in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. And just to sort of describe, this was really a performance piece with you, really. Uh, encircled or, or covered with this barbed wire yes. and, and roses in it. Yeah, like 80 roses mm. and barbed wire. And then I just walk in the street and I 
uh, I blow white balloons. On each balloon, um, there is a word written there that represents something that I want to change, I want to shift, like for example, apartheid. So I blow the balloon, of course, inside the barbed wire, mm -hmm. bam, explodes, and that's for me the symbol of shifting. Then I use this, uh, this broken ba um, balloon mm -hmm. as, a, as a petal for my, for my stem, because I will cut the wire, mm -hmm. and then the wire will be a stem, so I will make a flower with the white balloon and the wire. Then I get a rose and together I give it to people. Okay. I give it to people as a symbol of transformation and a hope of beautiful transformation, but also in the meantime, I'm, I'm getting free from the structure because of mm -hmm. course, cutting the barbed wire, I slowly free myself. Mm -hmm. So by the act of giving, I free myself. Yeah. So that, that's okay. the point. So by the act of giving, you free yourself. Yes. Can you say that again? By the act of giving, I free myself. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that's the point. I free myself by the act of giving. If I wouldn't give, I would be trapped in this. Do you think we're trapped as a human race at the moment? We are trapped because in not... our mind and our little <laughs> spiral of thoughts and uh, greed. Mm. I'm also greedy. Mm. I'm greedy. Of course, look how many brushes. I can use one. <laughs> But no, it's not all about that. It's not all about that. I need that. Maybe not all. I could give them away. But it's not about that. But we do have that side. And that can be, can be nourished. Mm. If we don't get that shift of consciousness. Yeah, I think that also reminds me of the tree, Ai Weiwei's tree here that we're seeing. Yes. And this contrast between the tree, I don't know if you saw it in Tate, that was very much like this. It was made from all these different pieces of many different trees in China. Yeah. And he brought them all together and made it into this kind of almost living structure, but it was still obviously very grey, or looks almost like driftwood. And now he's created it into this sort of amazing, colourful rainbow of hope and light, really, for me. It's great. I think uh, that's how a tree looks like mm. uh, if we look beyond. Mm, mm. So there was Sweet Thorn and then there was another piece. And I, you, you might have to say the, the name bench. of it in Italian. Yeah, it's called uh, La Speranza nel Mare, Hope in the Sea. Hope in the Sea. Yeah, many people have this hope by crossing the sea, mm. which is stopped before they even arrive. Like they, they are, you know, when they travel in the sea, they know they might not get it. But they have their hope, and the hope is what saved them. It looks very charred and burned, yeah, the piece. Coal, yeah, it's also because of that feeling of, oh, it can't grow, it can't grow anymore. Okay. But also because coal, it was the old form of petrol. Like yeah. in the old days, coal was the beginning of uh, in the quick, quick industrialization. You know, that, that was like what, what people was aiming for and mm. needed. Mm. Now it's oil. Mostly. Yes. And what do you think of the refugee crisis in relation to climate change and the fact that, you know, thousands upon thousands of people are having to move because of climate change? Does this ever feature in your work? I mean, I suppose that's part of it. You've just... Of course. Uh, well, already by the fact that uh, we are privileged compare other countries and we might have a lot of water running uh, on our tap and probably other countries that don't, you know, there is this... this Diary when we can share, like we, we're still like giving. Mm -hmm. There's more, more powerful nations that want to share. Mm -hmm. a lot. Why? Why is that? Mm -hmm. And I buy things for a pound, and mm -hmm. sometimes I'm surprised. I'm like, mm -hmm. how can this be a pound? You know, mm -hmm. you know of course. Well, Someone it's a long... somewhere is not getting the right deal. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not right. This mm -hmm. is not right. And... Let's go on to your third work. So tell us a little bit about this one. What's it called? Well, this is like, um, you see, like these refugees uh, on this boat. Like you can see this sea of, of uh, dead people. And, oh, wow. But okay. they're kind of colorful, like, because yeah. they have hope inside. They still have hope, right. you know. And on the other side, you see people who are trying to help. Yeah. You know, but they also have something, you know, they have rules to... to yeah to follow, yeah. so it's not entirely their fault sometimes if they can't welcome, because that's, that's when the, the, the rulers say, okay, guys, you can't let in more than 15 people, so they mm. have to let in 15 people. So this is not even the, the fault of the people who works there. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, it's actually the, it's the politics, it's the system. Yeah. It's the system which is wrong. I really relate to them in many... <laughs> You really relate levels. to them? In many levels. In what, what Pocket level, uh, in, um, re 
I, I suffer racism in my own city mm. because I come from a very bad area. Mm. So like the most like um, posh areas, mm. they were like, oh, you come from there. Mm. Already from there, I could feel it. And sometimes my skin color, I hate my skin color. I don't want to say I hate it, but I'm like, oh, really? Like, you know, I represent this race which has been ruling and colonizing. Mm. You know what I mean? There's no difference, man. There is no difference even where we come from. Each culture has their own beauty and their own uh, heritage. We are destroying heritage. Uh, I told you about sweet corn, but there is a, another thing about it. Because that structure that, that is around me is not uh, only seen as a, as a barbed wire, you know, the obstacle, the boundary. I also see it as a protection. Mm. A protection to my individual, my own being. They can't come to me and I'm using the same tools they use to protect their houses. They can take everything of me, but not my individuality. Mm -hmm. The problem is with all this refugee crisis, uh, unfortunately, uh, the individuality of people is taken. Mm -hmm. You know, their, uh, their integrity is taken. So that, that, that's also a symbol of that. Like, it's a beautiful protection mm. because there are roses. Mm. And so it has, it has uh, several meanings, this sweet thorn. So sweet thorn, I don't see it only as a, as a political mean, but also very spiritual. Like, no one can step beyond that line.